So uh, we are huge fans of rolling dice, flipping coins, drawing cards from a deck. Talk to any anyone that does a lot of probability. Those are really common types of questions. Um, so we are going to go ahead. We're going to use um, rolling two six-sided dice. So they're shaped like cubes and they have dots on each side. And we're going to roll two six-sided dice. So one's going to be orange, one's going to be blue. And I totally admit I have no idea when I should use the word die or dice. So I'm just going to use dice every time here. <laughs> so an example of what we might ask that we're not going to answer yet, but hopefully at the end of these lessons this week you can. We, are, we can ask, what are the possible outcomes I could get out of these two dice? How many different ways can I roll a double? So, for example, if I roll a 1 and a 1, so both of these, this is a 1 and a 5, but if they are a 1 and a 1, that's a double. Uh, what's the probability the dots add to 7? Here they add to 5. Um, so there are a handful of ways it could add to 7. And then what is the theoretical probability model for the sum of two dice? That one's a little more complicated, but we'll, we'll go in that direction as well. So we have our sample space, events, and probabilities. So we'll start by describing a sample space. So the sample space, notation-wise, it's like a curly S. It's okay if you just use a capital S. And it's the set of all possible outcomes. So it depends on what I want to focus on. If I want to focus on uh, what, what are my roles, what can I roll here, my sample space, I could roll a 1 and a 1. A 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, and so on, all the way through a 6 and a 6. Basically, all of these 36 combinations here, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do the same thing here. There are 36 combos. So that would be my sample space if I want to know what all the possible roles I could get. Then an event is a subset of that sample space. So I would be taking these events and it could be a subset. So maybe I am interested in A, uh, rolling doubles. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six different ways I could roll doubles. Okay, so now that we've, okay, so once we've described our sample space, how many, know how many elements are in it, we have our events, we can find the probability of that uh, event occurring. So the probability of event A, which is just some generic, uh, here we're going to let A be uh, rolling doubles. So you can get a one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, or six, six. So the probability of event A happening. So it says size of event A. So here there are six ways A could happen. That's its size. And then the size of the sample space. How many combos are in the sample space? 36. So I'm going to get one sixth. You can go ahead, put into decimal round just a little bit because it's 0.16 repeating. So about 0.167. So there's, you know, one sixth the time that you roll fair six sided dice, a pair of six sided dice, you'd roll doubles. So then talk about some rules. All probabilities need to be between zero and one. So if a probability is equal to zero, it means it's it never happens. It's literally impossible. It cannot happen. It never happens. If it's equal to one, that means it always happens. There's never a scenario where it doesn't happen. And then you have everything in between. So you can't have negative probabilities and you can't have probabilities bigger than one. So probability has to be between zero and one. And the probability of the sample space is one. So the probability that, let me translate, probability that I roll the dice and one of these 36 
events happen is 100%. It's guaranteed at least one of them will happen. So the probability of everything happening is 100%. And then we have this, uh, the probability of not A happening is the complement. And notice it's spelled a tiny bit differently than if you were to say something nice to somebody and that's a complement. It's complement of A. So the probability of not A happening is 1 minus the probability of A happening. So in this sense here, the probability of not rolling doubles or a complement is the pro um, 1 minus uh, 6 over 36. So you're going to get 30 over 36. It's a 5 sixths. Or, because off the top of my head, it's about 0.833. So the idea is if there's a 1 6 probability that you'll roll doubles, there's a 5 6 probability you won't. Um, I had a friend, it was very, very cringy. They said everything in the universe is cheese or not cheese. And that is true. It was a little cringy, but that's one way to think about it. It's the probability of whatever A is and the probability of everything else. And, and just as a note on notation, sometimes people will write A with a C. I will write a C for compliment. Um, some folks will write a, like a, a prime um, or like a, um, yeah. So I will not use that notation, but if you see it, that's what that means here. So absolutely can't go below zero, can't go above one. If you have a probability of 0.5, I like to throw in a zero afterwards. It means there's a 50% chance. It's equally likely to go either way. Okay. So one thing we really, really like to do in statistics is we like to list all of the possible events that can happen and the probabilities associated with each event. When we put this together, it can be in a table, it can be in a graph. This is called a probability model. So the example we're going to look at here, I'm still rolling my two um, dice. I'm going to say x is equal to the sum um, of the dice. So if I roll two dice, I can, the, the dots on the dice can add to two, they can add to three, four, all the way up to 12, because they're only six-sided dice. And here, the probability, so rolling a two, that happens about 2.8% of the time. Rolling a six, that happens about 13.9% of the time. A seven, about 16.7%, and then you see them start going back down. And you might see um, they'll definitely put these into uh, into graphs as well. So suppose, and here it is right here, this is that ideal probability model. If we just rolled dice forever and ever and ever, this would be the um, the probability model here. So if I go ahead and in real life, I roll a hundred times, I might observe, you know, some proportion of them are two, some are threes. It doesn't look great, right? Because it should look more like this where sevens roll the most and then six and eight and so on. So what I can do is I can increase the number of rolls and this looks much closer. If I did a million rolls, it would look even closer to this, and so on. Um, so as I increase the number of trials, so the number of time I roll the dice, uh, the closer that these experimental models will look like this theoretical probability model. And there is a great handy theorem that explains or uh, describes that the law of large numbers tells us the bigger um, our sample size or the more observations we collect, 
the proportion of occurrences um, will converge to that. So um, it's saying that these uh, models that we got by actually uh, rolling a hundred times and then actually rolling a thousand times, if I actually roll a million times, they're going to get closer and closer to this theoretical model. Okay, so here's just a quick example. A new has three fair coins. Maybe we want to know what's the probability exactly two of those three coins come up tails. So just for familiarity, heads, because usually on our coins, there's one side of the coin that has a face on it, and tails. So for me, the first step I want to do is to write out all the possibilities. So I'm going to actually write out my sample space. So I can get heads, 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 where all three of the coins are heads. I can get heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, heads, Get heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, tails. So I've done this a few times. I have a pattern I use so I make sure I can get through them all and actually remember them all, sort of. I still miss one every now and then. One way to figure out how many combos you should have, so for coin one, there are two combinations. I can get a heads or a tails. For coin two, there are two combinations. I can get a heads or a tails. Coin three, same thing. I could get two. Two times two times two. That means I have eight combos. So double check. Count them. There should be eight combinations. A time where I get all heads, where I get two heads and one tail. I get two tails and one head, and all tails. So now that I have my sample space, well, before I get there even, the probability of any of these, so probability, let's say, of heads, heads, tails. So first coin, there's a 50% chance of getting heads. Second coin, there's a one half probability of getting heads. The third coin, there's a one-half probability of getting tails, one-eighth. You can do this with all of, all eight of these. There's a one-eighth probability of each combination happening. This is only because, only because of this. If we didn't have equal probability of heads and tails, that wouldn't be true. So be cautious. So we have probability um, exactly two tails. That's going to be the probability. And there are three combinations we could be looking at. So heads, tails, tails, plus probability tails, heads, tails, plus probability tails, tails, head. So I can just add that up. That's one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth. I'll get three eighths, which is put into decimal terms, 0.375. So this means if they were to go ahead and take three fair coins and, and flip them one time, there's a 37.5% chance that that they would have a combination of coins that is exactly two tails. Um, if they were just to, to keep flipping forever and ever, it would happen about 37.5% of the time. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. We will see you for lesson 14, where we're going to start talking about some rules of probability.